Hi everyone, I'm that UK Gamer aka Martin with my latest video all about most of my Nintendo Switch games that I own. I'll go into more detail on that shortly. Firstly, this is the second take of this video, for some reason it decided to cut out during recording. Also, I hope you're staying safe and that if you do game collecting you're able to restart soon if you have not already. I am catching up on your videos and I hope to see other people's videos soon as well as post more pickup videos of myself in the near future. I would also just like to share a couple of social bits about that UK Gamer. As some of you will be aware I have a website. It was down as that UK Gamer.wordpress.com. I've managed to change the domain to that UK Gamer.games. That UK Gamer is all one word, but there'll be a link in the description below. I also have now set up my own Discord server. The link to that will be in the description. And I hope to have many interesting chats with you there if that is your thing. Um okay, the video. Why have I said most of my Switch games? Well, that in itself is a lie because I'm talking physical games and I have I have no idea how many digital games and some awesome ones at that. Secondly, most is because I have, I believe, 13 physical Switch games of which I have 10 with me and my girlfriends. The other three, well, two of them are at home. The third one's being delivered now, so I'll get that any time. But they will also be featured on a pickup video once I am able to get home and have access to the new games I've bought. So, I only have one case with me, so I'm only going to be showing the cartridges. This is why I have the camera nearer than normal. I hope it doesn't scare you. And don't worry, this is just a short temporary measure. Let's get into it. So, I've split my case into two parts. I don't know how you can see this. There are eight games there. These are all pretty much first party, maybe second party. These are all third parties. And I make that 11, which means I have 14. Because I've got, as I said, two and the one coming. So I obviously can't count. So, what do we have? The first one is the first Switch game I ever got when I bought the Switch, which is Super Mario Odyssey. I'm obviously a much more Sonic fan than Mario. If you watched one of my first ever videos, I said that Sonic's my favourite character. If you've seen my pictures elsewhere, you've seen I've got loads of Sonic stuff in the Sonic collection, and it's just growing. But I do like the 3D Mario games. 64 is my favourite, followed by Sunshine. However, Odyssey is up there. I love the Mushroom Kingdom level. I know, maybe spoilers, but the game's been out two and a half years. Odd. I think I'm fine. Um, the New Donk City. Love that. The special level. The 2D one. If you played it, you know what I mean. That's probably the best level in the whole game. And I love the references to other Mario games in here. It's also a very solid 3D platformer. Very fun. Highly recommended. Second. Okay, so this is two games I'm doing it in. Reason being, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. I apologise for any glare for quality. It's not great, but this is the best I can do for now. I'll try and get better quality one stop later. So I'm doing these as one game because they are basically the same game. If you play Pokemon, you'll know that. I bought both of these on launch. I'm a massive Pokemon fan. You may know that. I don't know. But I love the main series games. I love getting them all. I've got pretty much every single one since... <sighs> Definitely Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, in which I buy both copies. I have one of every series of games before then, but... Since then, I've definitely caught, bought both of them, such as I bought Alpha, I bought Omega, I bought Sun, I bought Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, so on. Apart from Let's Go Be Pikachu, I haven't got yet. But you get the idea. So I had to buy both of these. Sword is the one I've been pretty much playing. Beat the League, doing the Isle of Armour DLC, etc, etc. This one I've hardly touched, but it does give me another opportunity to go through it. These are some of the better games in the series, in my opinion. The best ones probably since definitely Gen 5. I actually enjoy Gen 5. I know some people don't. 
It's definitely the links to Gen 5 in there, no doubt about that. If you've played it, then you know what I mean. But the region is based on the UK where I live, so I suppose there's bias. The main city is, well, where the league is, is London. Everyone knows that, which is only about 50 miles from here, so that's cool. And the region looks beautiful. There's fantastic new Pokemon on here. Um, my new favourite one, I really don't know, but I love the fact we have a footballer Pokemon. So, of course, I chose Score Bunny as my starter. Um, if you're a Pokemon fan, I would highly recommend these. Next up, the game I've been playing the most on here, probably for the last coming up to four months, which I've pretty much bought on release, and the one I'm sure pretty much everyone's playing. Yeah, Animal Crossing New Horizons. I know some people have got it, I've spoken to people about it, I've seen people online saying they've got it, people I'm friends with on Switch, etc. My girlfriend, my brother, my sister, and uh, a couple of people I work with, etc. have got it. And I can see why. It's a very fun game, especially given the current world environment and during the lockdown. This was a very fun game. Let you have a life, interact with people, but you get to make it your life. You get to develop the island in your way, have it suit your personality. Which is why mine is forcing people to take certain routes to get to certain things. So you're travelling all over the island and why I have a toilet showroom. I'll show this in a video one day. Um... It's a very fun game, there's a lot into it, especially with the free updates they're doing. The last one with the swimming and diving was awesome. Especially because you can do it with a paper bag on your head and maintain its structural integrity. So it also shows the game defies physics. Or would it be chemistry? Hmm. Uh, either way, it's a really fun game, highly recommended for the Switch. Also, summer update number two coming the start of August. So even more stuff to look forward to. Uh, okay. First one in this franchise, but it won't surprise people, but Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I own the original Game Boy Color this, not the DX Color one, the original one. Um, enjoy that. I mean, I do prefer 3D Zelda's, but I do enjoy Link's Awakening, so I had to buy this. I love the look of it. It looks beautiful. It's not as sharp as Breath of the Wild, but it's not meant to be. It's meant to be more toy-like, almost, you could argue. But the world, as a result of that, just looks beautiful. But it definitely has that Zelda feel. And it does feel as if you are playing Link's Awakening, again, back on the Game Boy. Or the Game Boy Color, wherever you played it. Um, I hope they do more games like this, release some more older ones again. Uh, such a, or even just 2D games. A 3D or modern version of Minish Cap, for example, would be awesome. Uh... This isn't my favourite Zelda game, and especially not on the Switch, but it's a really good game. And if you're a Zelda fan, I would definitely add this to your collection. Uh, quickly going back to Pokemon, and I said I didn't have Let's Go Pikachu, but I do have Let's Go Eevee. Why Eevee? Well, everyone else was going Pikachu, so I went Eevee. And not even just for trading purposes. More... I just want it to be different. And also travelling with an Eevee, which you've never been able to do. You can sure you can have an Eevee follow you in heart, gold, or silver, but not properly as your partner you can. This is a remake as such of Pokemon Yellow on the Game Boy. You can tell it by playing for the game. For example, having Pikachu be your starter. That's part of the reason actually why I went Eevee. I bought Yellow the day after it came out. I've had Pikachu as starter. Never had Eevee, so... Not only having Eevee as a partner to travel with, but also as my starter. So it gives a different variation to Yellow. Love some of the other touches to the game. References to Gold and Silver, for example. Um, and a twist to the story, such as the inclusion of, whether it's kind of spoiler or not, I don't know, but say Jesse and James, who actually are in Yellow, I believe. It's been ages since I played it. Um... It's also nice to visit Kanto in 3D. I know people say about references to Kanto and I get where they're coming from. It would be nice to have references to other generations, especially Hoenn, which is my favourite personally. But Kanto was the first region. It was my first region. So to be able to visit a 3D version of that in full colour on the TV, to me personally, 
is amazing and something which I am really grateful for. I just hope they do do Let's Go Johto. Unite, to be honest to me, was a letdown. I'm hoping that the Let's Go Johto rumours are true one day. I must point out quickly, this is a different experience to Sword and Shield. Oh, it's a main game. It features a lot of references to Pokemon Go in terms of the catching. So, even if you're not a hardcore Pokemon fan, but you play Go, then this may well be worth trying. Especially if you want to consider the main series games, as it provides a hybrid between the two. And lets you know what it's like. Also, I will get Pikachu one day. As I said, I tried to get both copies in the pair, so I'm going to have to do it one day. Uh, right, this is why I said Link's Awakening is not my favourite Zelda game on the Switch. Breath of the Wild. I only bought this start of this year, end of last year. However, I got the Wii U version on the day of release back in 2017. And I'm glad I did because I've grown to love this game. And to be honest, the opportunity to play this here while my Wii U's at home, be able to play this on the go, be able to start a new game again. Which I think I could do anyway, which is safe house, but whatever. Was why I bought this. I also bought it for my girlfriend at the time, so hopefully she'll play hers one day and we'll be able to play them together. But it's nice to be able to play through this game again and do it differently to how I did on the Wii U. This isn't my favourite Zelda game either, but I would say it is right up there. My favourite is Ocarina of Time, which is probably predictable, but it's also the first Zelda game I ever played, so I have. That justification, I guess. And you can't be bombed you bowling. I'm sorry. Best mini game ever. Um, but I love the exploration element of this. I love the innovative, innovativeness, is that even a word? Of the game with how you can take out enemies, how you can explore. Such as, you see it on the trailers, Octo Balloons and Freezing them. It's the different way you can do stuff outside the ordinary. Personally, I like kind of inventive ways to just beat the enemies. Which is much more fun. Part of it is they can fight back and also it's fun watching them burn. But yeah, but this is a massive game. And even if you're not a Zelda game, if you enjoy open world games or just want to explore, or especially if you are a Zelda fan, Link's Awakening is really, really good, but Breath of the Wild is the one I would recommend, especially with Breath of the Wild 2 coming out. So this will probably delve, or be taken into account even more, and then they'll connect somehow, I'm sure of it, making this an even more worthwhile purchase and acquisition. Okay, one more first party title, which I can't even think what it is. Uh, right. So I bought this about a year ago, I have all the rest in series, so I had to buy it. I think every Switch owner has to have it, really. Yeah, I went there. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Love Super Smash Bros. series. My favourite is Melee on the GameCube. I know, I'm weird. But, as it says, it is Ultimate. It has every character, which means it brings up back the Melee exclusives, namely Pichu. So, Pichu is awesome on the game. Don't argue with me. You won't. Beat me in a fight with Pichu. <laughs> Seriously, my best mate and I were awesome Pichu double team. Beat so many people with. Um, I love the vast variety of characters. There's what, 70 odd to start with? And that's before the DLC ones. So far, I've only downloaded Banjo Kazooie because I got Banjo Kazooie on the 64. I've got Banjo 2 in Japanese, actually, thinking about it. Hope to get the rest of them at some point, but. Also, I love the variety of characters. Sonic is on here, who's my main. Um, and you know what I'm like with Sonic. <laughs> uh, also, I love the fact that they've brought in other new series now, in addition to the new ones they've brought in, say on the Wii U and 3DS ones. So you've now got Dragon Quest, Persona, um, Arms is coming, as I said, Banjo Kazooie. It just opens up so many possibilities for the fights, given how each character is, well, mostly different to each other. Not always, so it's just like with the Echo Fighters, like Peach and Daisy. Well, it's basically the same character, just different skin. Um, 
but it opens up the fights to so many different variations. It also gives you new players to try out. You may find that although someone's your main, you actually play a lot better with someone else, or you just enjoy someone else's style. It gives you variety as a player. It brings new stadiums, new music. It opens up the game experience and allows them all to come together. This is the ultimate crossover game. So the ultimate name is very apt, I have to say. You also get to see situations you never thought you'd see or live rivalries you always want to see. Mario v Sonic. That's when everyone wanted when Sonic was introduced on the Wii version on Brawl. Um, but now you could have Cloud from Final Fantasy VII versus Luigi. I mean, who wouldn't want to see that? Or, as shown before by Nintendo in the trailer for the Wii U and 3DS ones with Pac-Man. Pac-Man, the Mario, the Sonic, the Mega Man. But this will allow you to do it on more stages with different music to what you can do on the other game. So, there's also a lot to unlock on this. You get all the original, either 8 or 12 characters from the 64 version to start with. So as a 70 old, that's a lot of characters to unlock. So it's definitely huge replayability as well. This is one of my favourite Switch games. Not my favourite. That would be either... One of the ones I'm going to show you soon. Or probably Breath of the Wild. But this is up there. Okay, so that's the eight official games I have. Um... I have three unofficial, and the other games I have at home are all third party. They are, I'll tell you now, but I'll show them probably later on. Uh, first of all, I've got Sphinx and the Mummy or something, whatever it's called. I saw it was £10 on Amazon, people posted my Twitter, so I bought it myself. It seems pretty good. Um, that's being ordered from Amazon, that's on the way. I've got uh, Starlink, bought it for £10 brand new in Argos last year, and being the Switch version means it comes with the R-Wing model for Star Fox. Given I'm a Star Fox fan from Star Fox Assault on the GameCube and Lilac Wars, or Star Fox 64, depending where you are, on the Nintendo 64, I had to have it because it's cool being able to play as Fox McCloud again. The last one is FIFA 19. It's me, there had to be FIFA, you know it. Again, this was about £10, but off eBay this time. And it's got Ronaldo, and as United fan, as you can see, I had to have a game with Ronaldo on it. Um, especially given what's happening with Juventus from FIFA 20 onwards. Or is it FIFA 21? One or the other. Basically, they're not on there as Juventus. Talking of which, you may have seen that I said about doing a review for Football Manager 20 on the Switch. I will be doing that. But having played it, I found that Juventus are actually called Zebra. Z-E-B-R-E. -E. I am sure you can guess why. But it shows it's not even just FIFA. This is taking effect in the use of the uh, Juventus name. So there you go. Okay. The three games. First one. I know which one. How about, given I just mentioned it, FIFA 8, 19... FIFA 18. This was bought for £10 from my local cash converters for Valentine's Day. I kid you not. My girlfriend, we normally buy each other a little romantic thing and something we want. And she gave me 15 quid, bought a romantic thing. And then I happened to see FIFA 18 for the Switch for £10. Instead of 20 odd as it was in CX, 22 maybe. Didn't have a FIFA game on the Switch, so I bought FIFA 18. And as I said, I now have 19 as well, so all to go for the FIFA collection. Which I want to point out has been growing, and I will do a video on it. Or at least the extra pickups, when I can. There's a couple of good ones in there. But, FIFA 18. It feels different to playing on the Xbox One. Definitely feels different to playing FIFA 17 on the Xbox 360. And I'm not very good at it, but I feel that a lot of that is also because the A and B buttons are switched. I use traditional FIFA controls, so B for shoot rather than X. And where it's switched around, I keep passing where I want to shoot and shoot where I want to pass, and it means I'm not very good. 
So, that's not good. But I'm getting there. Still a good football game though, either way. Okay, this one. Don't know how many people have heard of this, but it's actually a really good game. Especially if you it. And it is. What's it called? Yeah. Yu Gi Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. I had to look that up because I can't remember the full title ever. I played Yu Gi Oh! first. pretty much when it came out in the UK. My first ever deck was the original Kyber starter deck. So we're talking right at the start of the franchise. So probably, what, 18 odd years ago? 19 years ago at least? Which means also I've been using the legendary blue eyes white dragon, if that means anything to anyone, the whole time the game's ever been out in the UK. So right now I have so many of the cards, it's ridiculous. I have Nightmare Troubadour on the DS, which also covers the first series, which is awesome. This one covers all the series, including the most recent one, Reigns. Um, not I know much about that. I really follow the first original series on Summer GX. I also realise this will probably not mean anything to a lot of people. Maybe everyone who watches it. But Yu-Gi-Oh! is basically a trading card game. Where you summon monsters and use magic or set traps to knock each other's monsters out and deal damage to people's life points. They get to zero or they can't draw. Or one of many special card effects, they lose. If you do play you go you'll know what I mean. If not, it's a complicated game, so I'm not even gonna go into fully explaining it. You'll be there forever. It's a running gag how complicated the rules are. But if you are a fan fan of the series, a fan, if you are a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh, this is a very good game for the Switch. It is a modernised version of Legacy of the Joris, which came out a few years ago on the Xbox One and PS4, I believe. This modern update version is available on them as well as the Switch. You do get to play through each of the series, key jewels, but there are some missing. If it means anything to you, you give you Kai, no, sorry, you give you Joey on the Marina with the anchor is missing, which is really weird. But it has all the cards up to, I have no idea when, but very recently, so that's really good. So if you're a Yu Gi Oh fan, I highly recommend this game. If not, I wouldn't even bother because you're not going to get it. That's not actually the game's fault, that's just, that's always been the case with the rules for Yu-Gi-Oh. The original rule book was about that thick, and that was just English. I kid you not, so. Yeah. Last game, and I'm sorry if it's been dragging on, and I've gone off on tangents, and I've not been very clear. It is admittedly one o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah. And as you can see, I've got an extra hair, so I'm just ranting and go on another tangent. Point is, I've got one game left. And with Breath of the Wild, this is probably my favourite game. And when I show you why, you'll understand. I hope. As I'm sure you can see, this is Sonic Mania Plus. Which you may know is an updated version of Sonic Mania, which came out in 2017. It's a 2D classic looking Sonic game meant to basically celebrate Sonic's 25th anniversary actually, just a bit late. It's got remakings of old Sonic levels, Green Hill Zone, Chemical Plant Zone, Oil Ocean etc, as well as New Zones. But it's all done in the style of the old 2D games. It's got features from all the games, I meaning it's got the... Super Peel Off or whatever it's called from Sonic CD where Sonic runs its legs to the infinity symbol. Something like Super Peel or something like that. But being a 2D Sonic game, you'd hope it's as good as them and it definitely is. It's one of the best 2D Sonic games. To be honest, it's one of the best Sonic games ever. I still prefer the original Sonic 2 to it. Possibly even the original Sonic 1. But that might just be the nostalgia kicking in. Although Sonic 2 is my favourite game ever, so maybe not with that. But this is right up there. If you love Sonic, if you especially love 2D Sonic, you need this game. I swear I've not been paid by Sega to promote it, or any of the other ones. But 
I genuinely feel, as a fan of them series, if you are a fan of the, the series itself, you will enjoy the games if you haven't tried them already. There's so many references to the Sonic universe in this game. It is a Sonic lover's dream game. Right up there with Sonic Generations, which I mentioned on my Xbox 360 video. I love these nostalgic Sonic games. I really love both this and Generations, which one I prefer, I'm not entirely sure, I have to admit. But it just shows how highly I rate both of them. This has more of a classic feel, being proper 2D pixel graphics. Generations is more feels more modern, but at the same time has the whole classic 2D thing, so they're special in their own way. But if you love 8 bits, 16 bits Sonic, whichever of them, this will be your one. And I would highly recommend it. One thing I would look out for, which is kind of obscure, but a sweet reference, if you know it, is the main boss, the Chemical Plant Zone. I'm not saying anything else, just keep an eye out for the Chemical Plant Zone boss. Um, yeah, Sonic Mania Plus, sweet game. Okay, I did mention I have lots of digital games and I probably will maybe do a video on my favourite ones for them at some point. Be a little bit more awkward, so I've got to film it off the TV, so it should be fun, especially as I'm using my phone. But there's some real good games there, in my opinion, featuring geese and goats and playing cards and trains. Not all in the same game, unfortunately, because that'd be really interesting, but. You'll see. Anyway, sorry this video has gone a little longer than I wanted. Sorry I went off on so many tangents. I hope you're still awake. Um, and I haven't bored you to death. Um, or at least made you go to sleep. Uh, what I'm saying is, I said, please feel free to check out the website, the Discord, any of the other social media. If you do use any of them, please feel free to leave any feedback on them or on here. It's much appreciated. I have other ideas for videos. You may have seen in the last pickup video, I grabbed an Atari 2600. I hope to do a first play of that on here this weekend. So look out for that, that should be interesting. Um, yeah, but for now, all I can say is thank you for watching. I will catch up on your videos soon. I can't wait to see what you guys have got out there and will put out there. I just want to share my love for this community. Thank you. Bye.